Hey, everyone, and welcome to the All It Takes a Goal podcast, the best place in the entire world, including all of Canada, to learn how to build new thoughts, new actions, and new results. I'm your host, John Acuff, and today I'm going to be talking about the five big games you play in life. There's only five. Sometimes life feels overwhelming. Sometimes it feels complicated or complex. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to just five games. And this is actually a concept from my brand new book, All It Takes is a Goal. I recently got the advanced reader copy. That's what this one is. It's paperback. The, the real one will come out in September. It'll be hardcover or hardback, if you will. And today I'm going to share one of those ideas from there. And it's also an idea I teach in the Guaranteed Goals community. Over the last few years, since 2015, I've worked with 29,417 people on their goals. What do I mean by that? I mean, 29,417 people have taken an online challenge with me, taken a course with me. And so it's been really fun to see nearly 30,000 people just like you change their lives when it comes to accomplishing their goals. We actually have somebody today that did that. So I'm going to play a quick audio clip of one of the people that's in my Guaranteed Goals community. Let's take a listen. Hey there, uh, my name is Brandon, and I want to tell you about the Guaranteed Goals community, aka the GGC. Now, if you're anything like me, you get a bit skeptical when someone says the word guarantee. Like, how can they guarantee it? Especially when it comes to my goals, how can someone else guarantee that I can accomplish my goals? Well, it's simple. It's all about the work that you put in. Uh, The system that they lay out, Uh, in the GGC, if you will follow it, you will accomplish your goals. Thanks to the GGC, I've been able to do so many things that I didn't think was even possible. I've been able to publish my first ebook, I've been able to grow my platform, launch a podcast, and I've got another book coming out real soon that I am stoked about. I wouldn't have been able to do this without the help of the Guaranteed Goals community. I can't recommend it highly enough. I hope to see you in there. Oh, I love hearing things like that. I absolutely love it. That's the reason I have the Guaranteed Goals community. It's actually open right now. Registration is available. You can go to acuff.me slash goals. That's A-C-U-F-F dot M-E slash goals. If you've got a goal you want to work on, this is a great community that'll help you achieve that. So in addition to tons of content, you get tons of community. People from around the world that are working on goals that'll encourage you and challenge you and lift you up. So check it out, acuff.me slash goals. Now today I'm bringing back on my buddy GN. GN is one of my team members. We've worked together for about the last year. He's from Brazil. If you've listened to the podcast, you've heard him on a couple of episodes. He's a collegiate um, tennis coach, goal getter, just ran his first marathon. Love getting to talk to GN. So today GN and I are going to talk about those five big games. So GN, welcome back to the podcast, dude. This is a great time to be here, John, especially with my coaching background, I love games. So this yeah, is you know all about games. <laughs> you know all about games. So Gian, we've talked about this a number of times and, and you're great at going, okay, let's break this topic down. So how do you want to break down this discussion today? Yeah, I think we're going to address the five games and maybe talk a little bit about each individual game. And then because I was a college coach for so many years, there's a few things that each game consists, right? And then we want to talk about those things as well. But we're going to tease that for later in the episode. But let's break down the first five, the five games that, that we talk about in the GGC often. So we have a career game, finance game, relationship game, health game, and then a fun game. So let's break down the career game first, John. Yeah. And the reason that I think about goals this way is that often when you think about vision, people, when they think they have to come up with a goal, they have, they feel like they have to come up with a perfect vision for their life. And vision comes in a thousand different varieties and it feels overwhelming. A lot of people, myself included, get overwhelmed by the blank page when it comes to dreaming about a goal, dreaming about your life. And I love to simplify complex things to say, okay, Here's this big topic, like the book Soundtracks is a simplification of mindset because mindset is one of those topics that's really fuzzy, gets really holistic, really complicated. And Soundtracks goes, no, 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 no. The thoughts you have are just soundtracks you're listening to. You can change those. And so the same thing is true of the games. So there's five different games. As, as you mentioned, GN, there's career, there's finances, there's relationships, there's health, and there's fun. So with a career game, Anything work-related fits into that. So it can be you want to get a promotion. It can be you want to be a makeup influencer. 
It can be you want to do a side hustle. You want to work less hours. You want to work more hours and, and increase your pay. Anything that's related to your professional life, that 40 to 50 hours that you do every week is a career game. Finances is anything to do with money. So if you want to get out of debt, if you want to save up for a new car, if you want to send your kids to college without debt, if you want to figure out your retirement plan, if you want to budget, anything that's related to money is a financial game. Relationships, that one's interesting because a lot of people don't have relationship goals. They just hope that their relationships organically naturally happen as if anything good accidentally happens. And it, it doesn't. You have to be deliberate. So you have relationships goals. That could be, I want to date my spouse. It could be, I want to get married. I want to, you know, find somebody in my community to date. It can be, I want, you know, to join a new friend group. Maybe, maybe you realize that COVID made you realize how lonely you were. Like you had to work from home and you missed all that community of work. Um, the joke I always do is I know I'm lonely when I start over talking to UPS guy, like when he wants to drop off a package and I'm like, Hey, 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 how's the family? How's Pam? And he's like, dude, I just, I want to leave this box here and then back away from your doorstep as fast as possible. So you play a relationship game, health game, super obvious health game is you want to lose a couple pounds. You want to get back in shape. You want to run a 5k. You want to run a marathon like you just did. Um, you want to work on your mental health. That health includes mental health. Maybe you go to a counselor. Maybe you say, you know what? I'm tired of carrying blank around for so long and I want to, I want to process it. And then fun is that catch all bucket. Anything that doesn't fit into the other ones can fit into here. It can be, you want to illustrate children's books. You want to write more. You want to knit. Um, you want to, you know, raise a Rhodesian Ridgeback because you grew up with that type of dog. Um, any other game fits into the fun game. So that's how I think about each of the five games. Really simple buckets, because then once you've got them in a bucket, you can start to actually work on them. Yeah, I love those, John. My question to you is, do people have to have one game, one, one goal in each game at all times? No. So I look at it as you balance, you balance it out. Um, I think there's some seasons where a game becomes really important. So for instance, the week I moved my oldest daughter into college, that was a lot of relationship game. Like that was the focus that became the star. So I didn't go, Hey, I know you're moving into college, but I have a lot of health goals that I'm doing this week. So I'm going to have like, on the day we moved her in, I didn't also go jogging. I didn't say, hey, I'm going to have to break up this, like carrying your couch in. I have to get a quick three miles in. I think that people that are goal nerds, like you and I, get into trouble when we make our goals so rigid um, that they, they become kind of, they become idols, if you will. Um, and, and it's kind of like if you've got a water goal and you, if you find yourself trying to catch up at midnight, you're like, oh, I've only got 10 more minutes to drink 40 ounces. I got to get this down. And you're choking down water at, at 1150 because once midnight hits, you, you failed your goal. Like you, you should pause and go, wait a second. What am I doing? So for me, the big rule is I just don't want goals that are competing. So you can have one in each, in, in each category, one in each game. You can have a health game, finance game, whatever. But like if I said a compete, an example of a competing goal would be if I said, GN, my career goal is I want to speak 200 times this year. And my relationship goal is I want to have a better marriage. Those are competing because if I'm gone 250 days a year, my marriage will not get better. Like those are competing. So I think you can have as many goals, as many games as you want, as long as they're not competing with each other for time, for energy, for resources, et cetera. Yeah. That example about the water challenge, John, seemed a little personal. Do you want to explore that a little bit more? Yeah. Well, you and I, uh, it's funny. Gian and I like to challenge each other again, goal nerds. Like I, when I, the stuff I share in this podcast is like 4% of the nerdy stuff I'm doing. Like I think over time, as, as you get, as I get to know you better and you get to know me better, the, the, if you're a listener, I'll be like, okay, here's another goal I did. So like anytime you think, man, this guy does a lot of goals, just know I'm actually holding back right now so that you don't think I'm too weird. But Gina and I started talking about doing a water goal, like a gallon a day. And then uh, like by on day, Easter, on Easter. Yeah. <laughs> I like it was started the day after Easter started Monday. And I told Gian like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. 
And then like two days in, I was like, no, it's too much water, dude. A gallon is too much water. And then like the next time I talked to him, I was like, a hundred feels right. And I was like, you know what? 80 ounces is a good number. And what happened to me, and I actually did a reel about this. The dude who came up with this goal, I realized weighs like 250, 260 pounds. I weigh like 155. Our bodies need different amounts of water. So why would I ever listen to a hustling influencer that goes, you got to drink a gallon, you got to drink a gallon. I'm like, well, actually, nah, I don't. I don't. And so for me, we could do a whole episode, GN, on why you should modify your goals to your needs, not... Like the other issue I have is when like a 24 year old who's single with no kids goes, you got to grind 80 hours a week, dude. That's how you get ahead. And you're a 44 year old with three kids and a full time job. And you're like, yeah, we have different lives, dude. Like I don't. So that, yeah, the water goal is very personal because I recently told you like, I'm no, dude. No, it's too much water. Yeah. I, or, I didn't or, want. Go ahead. Or you have to work work out a, uh, an hour and a half every day you yeah, know? yeah yeah and, so and like, half of that workout needs to be outside so like yeah so i think you should modify goals that's a big like whether yeah. whether you're doing one game five games you should modify it to who you are and same with this podcast if i share advice and you're like mm, i'm gonna do it this way awesome i care most that you're in motion like whether you do it exactly like me doesn't really matter. I care that you're in motion and you're getting the most out of your own life, not trying to do exactly what I do because we, we live in different areas. We have different strengths, different, different opportunities. So I'm always preaching like modify, modify, modify. Yeah. And that goes back to something that you always say, John, too, that when you create your own game, you make those rules. You, you're not following someone else's rules. And when you're, when you're making your own rules, you're more likely to succeed. Yeah, you're in, like, it's easy to win a game when you make the rules. And yeah. that's the goal. Like, the goal of this is you figure it out and go, no, here's the rules. I, I always think about that when it comes to reading. One year, I read 100 books, and I shared them online. And there would be people that would go, ah, that book doesn't count. Like, if I posted, <laughs> say I posted, like, Ish by Peter Reynolds, which is a great book. It's one of those children's books that's, like, written for adults. Or say I posted like a Batman graphic novel and like, by you know, by Snyder and they'd go, mm, graphic novel, what are you, 11? And so, or audiobook, audiobooks don't count. And I would always push back and go, according to whose rules? Like, who gets to make the rules in the John Acuff's personal reading challenge? I feel like it should be John Acuff. I don't like, it's weird that it's you, stranger on the internet, but I feel like it should be John Acuff. And again, I think, when you come up with a game, financial game, health game, whatever, you make the rules. And so you get to be in charge. Like you're the CEO of you. That was one of the ideas I put in soundtracks is I'm the CEO of me and I'm the best boss. That's a great soundtrack when it comes to goals. I'm the CEO of me and I'm the best boss. I make, you know, I'm making these decisions and that, that kind of ties into that idea of you're a hundred percent of the people you're in a hundred percent control over. Like it's not a popular idea because personal responsibility is kind of like a, a negative phrase in our culture, but dude, you are 100% of the people you're a hundred percent in control over. And when you accept that, you get to do some awesome things in your life. Yeah. I love that. Love that. And I can also see sometimes we, we're not in control of our schedule, right? A lot of us have bosses and, and are yeah. working, right? And so we have to pick some goals that are fitting into the schedule that is demanded of us. Um, I remember I signed up to do an Ironman for the sole purpose of proving my wife wrong, which was a bad decision, right? Yeah, yeah, a spite, a spite <laughs> goal. I love a spite goal. Yeah, totally. Like, I took off Good Friday this year because last fr last year my wife was like, why do you have meetings on Good Friday? And I was like, I, I scheduled those. And she's like, you're the CEO. And so this year I was like, by the way, Good Friday's off. I got it. Yeah, spite goal. So funny. <laughs> um, but I, I remember... I decided to do an Ironman and my schedule did not help with that training because you have to be training for four or five hours every day for an Ironman yeah. and my schedule with a full-time job and two kids did not help. Right. But then did, did a pandemic happen to you, John? You did. Yeah, it did we had it. We Lynchburg. had it yeah. in Nashville. We had it. <laughs> yeah. Here in Lynchburg, we had one too. And so everything shut down. And actually I had five hours every day to go <laughs> yeah. w work out. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, I got lucky there. Um, but, but sometimes I think we pick goals that are too time consuming and, and we're not able to fit those rules, fit those games into our current schedule. 
Well, the, rea- the, the challenge there is that if you make your goal divorced from reality, you've already failed. So if you, if you plan a goal that requires 10 hours of free time a week and you never look at your schedule and you realize, oh, I got, I got an hour. I got an hour. I'm going to try to fit 10 hours into this hour. And then you start it and you fail automatically. So yeah, a lot of this is you get it in where you can fit it in. So for me, what that looks like is if I only have time for two miles, I run the two miles, even if my plan was four. But if something happened that, you know, my daughter's car broke down and we have to take it to the shop and that that messes up the day. And I can't say to Jenny, I didn't have that in my schedule today. Like I didn't have flat tire on my, I'm sorry, I have a plan and it didn't include flat tire. You get it in where you can fit it in. I think that's a good soundtrack for goals. Like you get it in where you can fit it in and it's not going to be perfect. And the other thing is like, I will move thing. I will move less important goals or games to other parts of the day. So say I have a, a career game and a health game, like Say, say my, my, my game is I want to work out every day, you know, for the next three weeks or like, as a challenge, or I want to 45 minutes a day, whatever. And I have to be at a client, you know, event at 7am. That's the sound check that happens often 7am sound check. And I got in the night before at midnight because the flight was delayed. There's no point in me getting up at 5 a.m. because I have to run to meet this because what happens is I underserve the client. And so I show up tired and they're like, man, that was really flat and go, I know, but I had to, I had to run. I have this run. Like, no, the, the game that matters most in that situation is the career game. Show up, crush the event, do your best for the client, run later in the afternoon if you have time but put the focus on the thing that matters. And that's what I think games help with is they simplify it. So you're able to go right now in this day, in this amount, I have 30 minutes, I have 45 minutes, I have an hour, whatever, which of these games matters, which one doesn't. And again, if I get stuck on my rigid goal, I force games into spots they don't belong. And then I underperform the things that really matter. So I think you're always trying to kind of balance that. So John, as a, as a college coach, I was, I was a coach for 10 years. And I know that there's a few things that every game consists of. And it's a score, an opponent, halftime and timeouts, fans, and then every game has a prize. Can we talk about that a little bit and maybe start with a score? We need to have a scorecard, right? Yeah. So if you can't measure your progress, you'll never know it exists. The way I sometimes say it is failure is loud and progress is quiet. You know when you failed. Like failure is neon, progress is invisible. So I'm always trying to find ways to measure the progress um, of a goal. So I'm always trying to relate it to a number to go, okay, well, can I find a way to make this a number? So for instance, like maybe your goal is to read a bunch of books. That's an easy one. You could say number of books you read. You could even on Goodreads, you could say number of pages you read. They track that for you. You have a number that's obvious. Finances have an obvious number. Um, Career, if you said, okay, I want to increase my sales, you could count the number of cold calls you did. You could count the number of client lunches. You could count how many times you networked with somebody. I'm always just trying to find a number related to a goal. Because if I say I want to work out more consistently, I'll never succeed at that because there's not a number. But if I say I worked out two times every week last month, and now I want to do three times every week, so I, that's 12, like three times four is 12. So that's the first thing is, okay, what's the score? Because the score will motivate you. Like you'd never, we, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, they showed very little information on the screen during football games. Like you didn't, there was no <laughs> line that showed you where the first, first down was. They didn't show a running. They had like the clock and maybe the score. Now, when you watch a modern football game, there's a thousand points of data where they're giving you the stats of the person who just caught the ball, you know, the yardage, everything. We crave data to stay engaged. So remembering that, you go into your goal and go, how do I make sure that I have an obvious score for this so that I stay engaged? If you watch the football, imagine turning on a football game and they didn't show you the score, they didn't show you how much time, and they didn't show you any any data, you'd be like, this is I don't understand this. This isn't fun. Like why, 
Like why? Like, and if somebody said, what's the score? You'd never go, I don't care. I just, I just watch it for the joy. I just do it for, you go, no, but what's the score? I don't know. I just, I hope they have a good time playing the sports. No, the score matters. And so if your goal matters to you as well, figure out a score. Yeah. Love, love that. That's, that's a good analogy. Um, sometimes I, I just watch a game because I like a commentator, right? So yeah. I like listening to the commentator, but at the same time, if there's no score, there's no stakes. Right. And if there's yeah. no stakes, I can just listen to the commentator's audiobook at one point. Um, yeah. But um, I love I love the, the score. And now let's talk to you about the opponent. Why, why does every game need an opponent? Well, it keeps you motivated um, and the opponent can be. So the opponent doesn't have to be a different person. Often yeah. in, a, in a game like the opponent is you. The opponent is OK. I'm I'm going against myself in a good way, not as an enemy, but as a, here's what I used to do. And now I'm doing something differently. Wow. You know, I, I drank more water than I did last month, or I did more CrossFit workouts than I did last month, or I mowed the yard faster than I did last week. Like you find a way to go, okay, I'm competing here. Um, and it, you know, that, that's one of those things where instead of fighting against somebody or trying to prove something, you're, you're trying to prove it to yourself. And it's, it's a really healthy way to look at, you know, a small game. So for me, this is a silly thing I'll do. I'll imagine an opponent sometimes. So I'll imagine the thing I'm doing is a football game. So let's say I have 100 pages to edit. So I know I have to edit 100 pages. Um, I've got a manuscript I'm working on. I will imagine I'm losing 100 to zero. I'm getting blown out right now. And I'll think of the team I hate the most. And then I'll go, so if I edit five pages, at the end of the day, it's 99 to five. That's still not good. But I, a little bit, a little bit. And then I'll go, if I, you know, the next day I get to 80, eight, you know, 80 pages, I got 20 left, 80 to 20, I'm coming back. And then like 70 to 30. And I think about that like, oh, okay, like, like let's go, let's go. Is that a real opponent? Of course not. That's just my imagination. But I think all too often – we don't give ourselves free reign to be as silly as we want to be to be motivated. I don't care if I look silly, if I got the thing done, you could uh, like somebody could say, well, you have a lot of silly ways to motivate yourself to write books. And I'd say I do because books are hard, like books are hard for me to write. So if it takes me 20 silly forms of motivation, I don't, the finished product of the book is worth the 20 silly forms of motivation. Um, so that's kind of how I look at it. And then the other thing I'd say about score and another example, the reason people love like the Delta sky miles app is it's a scorecard <laughs> like travelers. If you talk to a real traveler, like a hardcore traveler, cause I travel a bunch, they're like, okay, what you know? You platinum, you diamond. How close are you? You got the MQMs, you got MQDs. What are you doing? Like, how are you tracking? Like they have that conversation because it's a scorecard. Like even like, signing up for a rewards card at a gas station because they're like oh you got you earned 40 more points you're like i don't know what that means is that a free taquito i don't know but like i'm into the so every part of your life has scores they have opponents and so what i'm saying is take the things that work in other parts of your life as a game and apply them to your goal because it gives you this fresh wind and it shows you a different way to think of something that might like i know for instance there's, you know, we have this guaranteed goals community. You're like the cruise director in there. You do a fantastic job. And we have a lot of, um, a lot of like working moms, stay at home moms that are in the group. And they'll say, I, t I try to beat my record for how fast I can put away the laundry. Like it keeps me motivated. <laughs> I know like it takes me seven minutes. Ooh, today it's going to take me six and a half. They make it a game and it makes the time go by fast. And it make you know, it makes it fun. Or I remember there was another woman that said, I try to write an email. Like if I have a difficult email to write to a client, I give myself the length of the song. I play a song I like. It's like three minutes. I got to punch this out because they've been putting it off. So it's an, another fun way to get through that fear. You can play a career game, writing an email to a difficult client. You put on a song, three and a half minute long John Mayer song. You better go. And then they start. And so that's, that's one of the things I love about games is that they become fun if you let them. Yeah, love, love that. Halftime. Every game has halftime. Um, I think the best coaches ever were really good halftime coaches where they made adjustments halfway through the game. And the saying goes, you can't win a game in the first half, but you can definitely lose it. But a lot of the games are tied at halftime usually. And it's the modifications that you make halfway through the goal that would make you success or not. 
Yeah. So the thing, the big thing with halftime is it is a chance to to rest and review. There's two things that happen: rest and review. So you take a break, you take a breath, you go, okay, what am I doing? Like where, you know, like, wow, let me, let me chill out for a second. Let me, you know, catch my breath. So they rest, like they don't go from halftime and do wind sprints during halftime. Like they rest. So I think people, especially people who are goal nerds, go getters, it's not easy to rest. I have to work hard at vacation. Like vacation doesn't, I'm, I want to go. So like, I have to be deliberate about vacation, which is silly. If you're not that way right now, you're like, what? Like vacation is hard for you? If you are that way, you're like, ooh. Like if I, I'm tempted to bring like seven books on vacation so I can catch up on reading. And Jenny's like, oh, hey, I see what you're doing. That's a sneaky way to work. Stop it. So first is you rest. The second thing is you review. And the review is important because go-getters get obsessed with going and they never stop and go, is it working? Am I headed in the right direction? Is this still the right thing? Which parts of this do I need to retire? That's why we, you know, we talk about an end of a month review and the three famous things you do. I didn't create this. It's been around management styles for years is you think, what do I want to start? Like, what's something new I want to start? What's something I want to stop? Like this didn't work. And what's something I want to continue? So when I was at AutoTrader, we would do that after every big project. AutoTrader.com in Atlanta, I was a senior content designer, which is fancy for a copywriter. <laughs> and we would say, hey, based on what just happened with that project, what should we start doing? And we'd figure that out. Okay, hey, based on that project, what should we stop doing? And go, yeah, this bombed. This was not worth it. And then what do we want to continue? Like, what do we, you know, what do we think we should continue doing? So that's the benefit of a halftime. If you, and here's what I would say, Jim. The year gives you a bunch of natural half times. At the end of every month, you have a free half time. You got 12 of them every year. Then every week, you could say Friday, it's, it's a half time. Today, we're recording this on a Friday. This could be a half time. Um, at the end of every quarter, it's a half time. At the end of every year, there's a lot of people that do a year end review, but the problem is they never do a half time at January, February, March, April. Like, so good luck remembering February when it's December. You're not going to. You're going to go, I don't know. I did some stuff. Some stuff worked. Some stuff didn't work. Ugh. So I like the idea that there are half times hidden throughout the year if you take advantage of them. Yeah. One one tip for the entrepreneurs that we did here with our with our tennis team was a lot of coaches just do an end of year meeting with each individual player. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we would tell them this year was terrible. We don't need you anymore on the team. Obviously, that's not how we verbalized it. Yeah. But like, hey, you probably should enter the transfer portal. And then they'll be shocked. They never saw yeah. it coming, right? Or yeah. a boss tells an employee, hey, we're going to have to let you go. You're not performing well. And it was a whole year between meetings, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think having those those individual meetings consistently allows you to have those conversations where then yeah. when bad news comes, they're not shocked by it. Well, yeah, and you're not shocked, you know, in an individual situation, you're not shocked by the results. The results aren't a surprise where, you know, and here's the thing, the longer you spend away from the results, the scarier they get. When you're working on an individual goal, like if you're afraid of the scale, avoiding it for a year isn't the plan. Um, if you're afraid of writing, not writing for a year doesn't make it easier to write next time. It's one of those when you re like repeat the action and go, OK, I'm going to check in. I'm going to check the review. I'm going to check the sales like I haven't looked at my store, my store sales in a month, I'm, uh, but I'm afraid of them. If you don't do that for two months, three months, four months, five months. Six months in, it's really hard to look at that number. So frequent check-ins with yourself and with your progress are really helpful. For sure, for sure. The next uh, ingredient of a good game is fans. I feel yeah. like we all need we all need those. Um, what what is the importance of surrounding ourselves with with people that are cheering us on? Well, yeah, I think it comes in a few different levels. Um, one, there's a sense of accountability. Um, you want to stay connected to people, you know, you don't want to let them down. Like one of the reasons I run early Saturday mornings is I'm in a running group and I know my buddy's going to pick me up. And if I tell him Friday night, nah, dude, just not feeling it. I'm going to let him down. Like he would never be like, I can't believe that you're so lazy. Like he's not going to say that, but I like that pressure of, I want, I want Rob to know I'm still at it. Same with my CrossFit trainer. When I text him, I finished a workout. I don't think for a second he stops everything he's doing and goes, everybody gather around. John finally checked in. But that's for me. That accountability is for me. So the one element is accountability. The second element is encouragement. 
where you get encouragement from other people. And sometimes they say the most powerful two words, which are me too. Like that's the thing. You and I are doing this guaranteed goals community where there's hundreds and hundreds of people that are working on their their goals together in a mighty networks. It's a it's a special, you know, private off Facebook website um, that allows them to communicate. And what we'll see is people will go, hey, I had a really challenging week. Here's why. And then 15 people go, oh, I had that same thing happen to me last month. I had that same. And all of a sudden, you're not alone. Goals can be very isolating experiences if you let them be. But when you have somebody else, whether that's a relationship goal, whether that's a career goal, that's been where you're, you've been or is where you are right now in the same trenches and you're able to kind of connect with them, it's really, um, really invaluable. And it, it allows people to cheer for you and go, yo, you're, you're doing great. Like you're, you're making it like, I'm so proud of you. Here's, and then the third thing I would say is it gives you creativity. Other people will see things you won't. So they'll go, Hey, have you thought about blank or Hey, here's how we're doing that. Or, Hey, you know, I tried it this way and it worked really well. Like I always tell anybody at a public speaking event, like I spoke to, a, um, you know, a big contractors convention that they should talk to the other people there and say, what was the biggest surprise you learned this year? What was, you know, what was your most expensive lesson you learned this year? And they'll go, oh yeah, I tried this. It doesn't work. Like where, when I get together with other authors, we'll have that conversation. I had, I had dinner with another speaker the other night and he said, Hey, here's something I'm doing. And I was like, wow, I'd never thought of that. Wow. So there's accountability, there's encouragement and there's creativity when you get plugged into community. Yeah. Love that. Love that. I think that's why the GGC has been so powerful just in this last few months that we just started. Right. Um, I was shocked by how many people are willing to be vulnerable with each other so that they can receive something back as well. That, that willingness to, to be vulnerable. Well, yeah, I think that it's the, the thing I say in the GGC, um, is share your progress because you give encouragement and you get encouragement. It's a, it's a circle. Like you give encouragement and you also get it too. And, and I think that's, and it's been fun to watch you because we've only worked together for the last year. There's been a couple of times and you'll text me and go, dude, this group <laughs> is amazing. Like the stuff they're creating, the stuff they're doing, the stuff they're accomplishing. And they're so like, they go, yeah, I, I finished, you know, a book I'd been putting off for eight years. And we're like, what? Or they'll go, I, you know, I ran this amount of miles or I finally decluttered this garage that had been hanging over me. And there'll be, again, 50 people will cheer them on. So it's it's been yeah. really fun. I'll give the URL again, acup.me slash goals, A-C-U-F-F dot M-E slash goals. Yeah, that's, it's been awesome to to be in there. Um, and then the last part of a, of a game, it's a prize, right? It's a Lombardi trophy in the NFL. Um, it's, it, there's trophies everywhere when we're seeing sports, but sometimes I feel like we feel guilty if we're not, if we are giving ourselves some gifts and some prizes at the end of our goal. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we, there's things that we have a hard time with that are kind of the must be nice approach where we're afraid somebody's going to say to us, Oh, wow. Must be nice. It's just <laughs> such a cruel thing to say. Another one is like, Oh, you know, somebody has a lot of free time. Like when you, when you do something, you go, Oh, somebody has a lot of free time. Like it's such a passive aggressive, hateful thing to say to somebody. So I think we are a little worried sometimes on what somebody's going to say if we actually pause and celebrate. If we actually go, yeah, I'm really proud of myself. And that's also why you need a community. The part of the reason you need a community is that not everybody's a safe person that deserves to have you share the thing you're excited about. Like there Especially are people, on social media. Spe- 100% <laughs> on social media. I like to think on social media, if you share a failure, people go, yay, failure, me too, fail, fail, fail. <laughs> and if you share a win, they go, ooh, humble brag, which is such a passive aggressive. So we're okay with disappointment. We have a hard time with excitement. But the prize to me, it's, it does a couple things. One, it acknowledges progress. And you don't have to wait till the very end. I, I'm a big fan of many micro prizes along the way. Where it's like, oh, so like last night, it's funny, I sit, I sent in the fifth lesson. So inside the GGC, there's 15 different lessons, um, three different modules. So like kind of when you think about a goal, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's a finish. We have 15 different lessons, five in each section. And I finish, sent in lesson 10, I guess it would be. And I emailed it to you guys and you were like, what, dude? Like, you're killing it. Like, you, this is the second one you did this week. And I had given myself the prize of 
once I finish this lesson on the plane, I get to just veg out and watch a movie. Like I'm going to watch a movie. Like that's what I'm going to do. And so I was like, oh, cool. Like, so is that a huge prize? Is that a huge trophy? Like, no, of course not. But when I look at my goals as games, it's easy to add a prize and go, I get to watch this. And it was the cheesiest, like Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. It's called Last Stand. It came out years ago. And it's like, it's not a great movie. It's the whole theme is like, there's an escaped uh, drug cartel boss who's going to drive over the, like the Grand Canyon in a sports car. Like it's even describing it. I'm like, Ugh. like, but I was like, I'm watching that on the plane. I'll to- I'll watch anything on a plane. My standards go ooh, <laughs> way down. But that was a little prize. So whether it's you buy a thing for yourself, like if if it's you know you have a little plaque made, I think you can get really creative. But sometimes it's it's on a Thursday night. You finish the project. You got it to the team. You're glad about you know you're glad you did it, and you get to watch a cheesy movie that is not going to educate you, edify you, <laughs> accomplish anything other than you got to turn your brain off for a little while. So the prize matters. Yeah, love that. John, thank you so much again for, for taking the time and answering those questions. I love talking about games and, and sports and, and goals, obviously. Um, what, what can we do next with this information, right? I think in the GGC, we're starting the make it through the middle section of the GGC because in April, we our goals, our motiv- motivation starts to dwindle, right? Yep. And because January is so exciting. Our, our diets are perfect in January, but yeah. April comes around and we're just, yeah, terrified of the scale, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and so what, what do we need to do here in the April time frame to or May um, to to be able to keep moving forward towards our goals? Yeah. So the big thing is, one, don't beat yourself up that there's a slump. I think we act surprised by the slump and we act, we act ashamed by the slump. I think it's appropriate for you to go, yeah, I don't feel as motivated as I did in January. Motivation, motivation is one of the flightiest things. And part of the reason is we don't often work on it. We set our motivation in January, we touch it then and we go, okay, you better stay super high the whole year and we don't come back to it enough. So one of the things we talk a lot about in the GGC is how do you stay motivated? How do you maintain motivation? Not just hope it stays high because motivation is usually the first thing to leave your goal. When real work shows up, motivation tends to exit. So you have to work on your motivation. Um, You have to get into a community. You have to surround yourself with other people who are working on projects to inspire you. Um, And then there's there's specific things you can do around, okay, well, how do I manage my time? How do I, you know, manage the fuels that are going to drive me? How do I make sure that I, you know, I've got deliberate accomplishments or I've got deliberate stories I'm telling myself about the goal I'm working on? That's what we're going to be covering in the next 10 weeks or so. And what's fun is that in between every content week where I teach, you do a check-in. We have a check-in with Gian um, because when we studied people, again, 29,417 people. I like using that exact number because then it's real. Like whenever an influencer tells you like, so like, here's a fake thing. So many people have asked me for this recipe. No, they haven't. So many people have asked me where I got these pants. No, they didn't. You want to share your link, but in you want to like, you weren't in the streets and people were chasing you down going, I got to know where you got those pants. Will you please share an affiliate link? Fine. I will. Like, it's just this thing we say, we're like so many people have asked, they haven't, but in 29,417 interactions, we started to notice patterns and we started to, you know, we do research. And one of the biggest things that has people struggle with the middle of their goals is follow through. They don't have follow through. So we added check in with Gian's in between because it used to be years ago. I would teach a lesson every other week. But then there was this gap where people would experience this natural slump. Again, no shame, but it just happens. And we were like, how do we help fix that? So you do, you know, check ins every other week where you're bringing people on Zoom, you're doing hot seats, people are checking in on their goals. And so I feel like every year we tinker with it a little bit and go, what would help people even more? Like 29,417, I want it to be a million someday. What, how do we get to that number where people are really accomplishing their goals? So what I would say is find some community, find some motivation, uh, modify what you're doing, you know, to where it works for you, um, review the goals you've worked on. And ultimately, if you've got a goal you really care about, join the GGC. It's open right now, agif.me slash goals. Um, I'd love to introduce you to hundreds of the most encouraging people on the planet, including GN, including me. 
I do a VIP Q and A once a month in there, which is amazing too. It's live and it's fast and it's it's just super fun. So yeah, join the GGC Me slash goals. GN, love this conversation. Love getting to connect with you. We're a couple of goal nerds. Just know GN and I, when we're not on this podcast, are texting each other about how much water is too much water. And I was like, dude, it's too much water. So we have modified the heck out of that challenge. And I keep telling GN like, nah, dude, it's too much. It's too much. I want to share a review that I saw just the other day that was really inspiring to me. To me. Here's what it said. This came in from Chris Pitt. Chris said, the only podcast I listen to is yours weekly. Every single episode inspires and motivates me, challenges me to think and act differently, and gives me practical steps to take. Your guests are outstanding. Your questions lead to fascinating discussions, and the book recommendations are building my library. I recommend your podcast and your books more than any others. Appreciate the work and life of character that you model. That's what Chris said. Thank you so much, Chris. Super encouraging to both me, to Jen, to the team behind us as well so please keep those reviews coming thank you much so much for writing them please make sure you subscribe and follow and whatever the kids are saying and i'll see you next monday and remember all it takes is a goal thanks for listening to learn more about the all it takes is a goal podcast and to get access to today's show notes and exclusive content from john acuff visit acuff.me slash podcast thanks again for joining us Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of the All It Takes is a Goal podcast.